Claim evidence reasoning is a strategy that can help us become better scientists. First, let us begin with the claim. So a claim is an answer to a scientific question and you might have you might know this as a hypothesis, okay? So what it does is it describes the relationship between independent and dependent variables. So after you've identified your independent and dependent variables, you can use the following format to guide you when writing your claim. If, then list your independent variable, followed by then, list your dependent variable. Okay, so if, independent variable, then dependent variable. Next, we have evidence. Evidence comes directly from the data results. So when you've conducted your experiment in order to help you answer a scientific question, um, you're gonna be you know, collecting data. Use this data. This is basically gonna be your evidence, all right? So include examples of exact pieces of data, such as the numbers and the measurements in your evidence. And make sure that you collect enough data to support your claim. This is not the time to include a because statement. We will be doing that in the next step. So here are some formats that you can use to help you write your evidence. The first is the data shows, and then you would list the numbers or the measurements or even the qualitative or quantitative observations that you collected through your data. Or you can say the evidence that supports my data is, and then you would list the numbers, again, um, or any of the quantitative or qualitative observations that you have collected through your data. Finally, we have reasoning. The reasoning tells you why the evidence supports the claim. It explains how the evidence was able to support the claim. And this is the time for us to use the because statements. So after you've conducted the experiment and you've collected data and you've collected your evidence, you're gonna tell us why does the evidence support the claim, okay? Um, you can use the following formats. Based on the evidence, it was concluded that, and then you would list the, the evidence, the data observations that you collected, and how that supports your original claim. You could also use the following format. This happened because, and then you can explain why, why, why did your evidence support your claim? What does that mean? What does that mean? And finally, the data prov proves that the claim, okay, so you would list your claim, um, and then you would say because, and, ex and then you would talk about how your evidence supports your original claim. In addition to using your evidence, okay, uh, in the reasoning, you can also strengthen your, your reasoning by conducting additional research. So you can look at other experiments or other research that has been done um, that supports your original claim and include that in your reasoning. Let's look at an example together. So let's say that we are trying to answer the following scientific question. Does a person's height change throughout the day? First, let's begin with our claim. So you'll notice that I wrote the claim as an if-then statement. So if, and then I wrote the independent variable, then followed by the dependent variable. If the time of day increases, so the time of day is the independent variable, then the person's height will decrease. The person's height is the dependent variable. The words increase and decrease are both showing the relationships between the independent and the dependent variable. And if you go back to the claim, we mentioned that this is the time to explain how the independent and the dependent variables are related or how they are connected or how they influence one another, all right? Next, we have the evidence. So you'll notice that the evidence is essentially the data and I've collected that well, for this experiment, it was collected and summarized in a graph, okay, in a line graph. So the data shows that the height of the students decreased by average of 1.7 centimeters throughout the day. So throughout a 15-hour day, as you can see, because we have the time down here, um, on average, we can always see that the height was decreasing. So that's the general trend. 
But we also know if we calculate the, the average uh, height decrease, it was 1.7 centimeters. So you'll notice that the evidence has so much numbers. It has graphs, tables. Finally, we have the reasoning. So remember, in the reasoning part, you want to use the evidence and you want to explain to me why or how it supported the original claim. So if you remember, the original claim was, if the time of day increases, then the person's height will decrease. Did the data, did the evidence support this and how? So the reasoning would sound something like this. Based on the evidence, it was concluded that there was an average decrease in height of 1.7 centimeters across a 15 hour day. Notice how specific I am being when writing my reasoning. I am pulling evidence, specific evidence, and I'm including numbers, and I'm getting all of this from the data that was collected. And then I went an extra step. I did some research and I realized that this is happening because gravity caused the, causes the discs or basically the cushions in between our bones that are found in our spine to get compressed, okay, to get kind of squished over time. So gravity is kind of pushing on our the bones in our spines and causing us to become just a little bit shorter as the day goes by and even as years go by. Now, why should you use claim evidence reasoning? The reason why we use claim evidence reasoning is because it helps us work through problems or work through scientific questions and arrive at a scientific explanation. It also helps us make or better understand, you know, um, what our experiments and what our data and what our results mean. It, help us, it helps us to communicate and to think critically and to think more scientifically.